But you have to come to the U.S. with a plan. Don't get trapped in the credit cards. Don't get trapped in the student loans. Don't get trapped in the mortgage. Don't get trapped in the car payments and stuff like that. The minute you get trapped, you're stuck here. You're just in the loop of working, 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 working. <laughs> yeah, it's a great degree, but I found out when I was done that, yes, my salary would be Hello. I decided I wanted to come on here and just chat a bit. Not necessarily a planned video or organized video. Just come on and talk. It's just a regular vlog. I just finished cooking. I have the final cleanup to do, so I have some stuff in the sink to wash. How is my head wrap? My hair was long enough to slick back a bit with gel and then have this effect as if I have hair on top. My next video is actually going to be me showing how I did this without any hair, which I don't know. I just feel like I'm going to be doing this for now instead of braiding the hair. I said this all the time, like when I'm ready to just see my hair, I want to see it and don't have to deal with the whole braid situation and everything. And at the end of the day, work out cheaper and I like the look because it's giving like sister, like, you know, <laughs> anyways, for the past probably three days, I've been running through my closet and certain places and just doing a deep clean. I feel like I'm ready to start this new chapter of my life and I don't want to start it with anything that has old energy, just like clothes and like shoes and stuff like that. I don't know if you noticed. I'm not really a heavy fashion person or whatever. I'm very simple. This shirt, I've worn it probably four or five videos already because it's so simple. But anyways, but I have certain clothes that I've had for years and I've just been holding it because I just like the clothes and how they fit me. I guess it's a part of the nesting period for the baby too and everything. But I just went in my closet and I trashed, not trashed, I donated everything. My closet is so empty right now. I had some jeans and stuff that I even showed in my jeans try and haul. Anything that I said I had for years, all of those, they're all gone, all gone. I'm only keeping anything I bought within the past two or so years. <laughs> it feels good. I feel lighter. It's part also of the reason why I cut my, not really the reason why I cut my hair, but it's also a part of the vibe of why I cut my hair. I just didn't really mention it because I'm just not really fully ready to talk about it yet. It's a refreshing time. <laughs> I didn't vlog the cooking because even though when I cook, I like the way it tastes. And by the way, I even just started learning cooking really like two years ago and I'm 27 so that's a shame on me but I just never enjoyed cooking before but now I enjoy it the, my only problem with cooking now is finding new things to cook because my boyfriend's Nigerian and I'm Jamaican right and we live here in the US my boyfriend only eats certain things he's very particular about his diet in a very good way I don't know how he's so disciplined and I really want to emulate it. And his diet at the end of the day is healthier. So with that, it limits the options that we cook. Nothing with dairy, so nothing cheesy, no pasta type. Even his meat, no, I don't wanna be making this about him, but like certain meats and stuff, he gets it directly from the poultry. So we don't just go to a supermarket and just buy chicken. Like it goes directly to the poultry, points at the chicken, like I want that one. <laughs> so I really learned to make a lot of Nigerian dishes, which that was really fun, learning how to make them and stuff, especially after I found out that I'm over 50% Nigerian. There are certain Jamaican meals that he does not eat or does not like, and he's still like encouraging me to cook it, but there's no fun cooking a meal for yourself. I mean, I still do at some points, but it's no fun if I'm cooking and I'm just cooking for myself. I don't know, I'm very proud of myself with my development in cooking. And I'm shocked that I'm actually enjoying it. There's this one discussion I had this morning. Technically it's about society setting standards of where people should be at what age and time in their life. So some people feel like, oh, I'm hitting 30 or I'm 25 or I'm whatever age. I should be in college or whatever. I should have a degree by X time and I should be da da da. But my topic is more heavy on like finances. I mean, let's say somebody who's pushing 30, so over 25 to 30 or even beyond 30, whichever age you are, and you feel as if you should have like a house, a car, probably say, oh, I should have a job with a big degree or something by now. So let's say you have none of those things and then you feel like, okay, I'm nowhere I should be. And I was having a discussion about it to say, 
let's say you're in a position where you have no credit card debt or you have a low credit card debt. I'm making up a person, I have no idea who this scenario is. But let's say you have a roommate. So, I mean, you're working just a very simple, regular job. Could be a little above minimum wage, could be $20, $25 an hour, whatever. And you just feel like you're not where you are, where you, you want to be. But then I'm thinking about the person in that position, probably feeling down on themselves, but they have no idea how a lot of people in the position they're thinking is better would trade for their position any day. Because the person with a house, let's say they never bought it cash. <laughs> so they have a mortgage, right? So they have a monthly obligation. The person with the car has a monthly car note and insurance, which I don't understand. I heard that people are paying like $500 a month, $400 a month for car insurance. Which to me, that's crazy because I'm in New Jersey and I have full coverage on the car and my insurance is like 114 or so. I thought that was high. Like, And then you have student loans. So even say you have a, a big degree, it could be a doctorate, a master's or whatever. Some people paying $3,000 a month for that. Some people paying $1,000. If it's even $500 a month for your student loan or whatever. So those are the three of the positions that many people feel like, okay, I'm pushing 30 and I don't have a house, I don't have a car and I don't have a whatever. You probably don't recognize that you're in a better spot than the person that has all of these things. It probably don't make sense me saying it like that. You are still at a fresh start position. People in the position that you're thinking is better, a lot of them are stuck. You know what I mean by stuck, meaning there's no turning back for them. I saw a video with a lady saying how people who move from Jamaica or Caribbean or just probably any country, people think that they're having a better life than they did back home. So in my case, it would be Jamaica. Like many Jamaicans feel like, oh, my life only will get better in the US. But you have to come to the US with a plan. So if you don't come with a plan, it's easy to get stuck in the system with credit card debts, mortgage. You know, people back home, you, you can have a house outright, right? Whereas your house, you don't have a mortgage or you don't feel like the mortgage is screwing you. <laughs> as bad as it would be here or whatever direction you know car insurance back home actually does what car insurance do over here you're paying 500 dollars a month on car insurance and you hit your car you still pay out of pocket because either you don't want to let the car insurance company know that you hit the car because they're only gonna send it up to 700 dollars a month or the 500 dollars a month was a full coverage and it's the same thing with health insurance or whatever. If you're pushing 30 and you're in a position where you don't have a lot of debt, but you just like say have a simple job and whatever, you might not be in that fancy car, that mansion or whatever, but you're probably in a much better position than the person you're looking at. And that person, they probably don't want to admit it with themselves, which is a problem. If they are bold enough to admit it with themselves, you're in a better position than them. <laughs> Because when I say they're stuck, they have the fancy looking life, but they can't afford to lose their job or they have to be working multiple jobs, like two jobs to maintain the life, even though they have a job that's considered good. They still have to do another job to, to fill the gap. So it looks good. I mean, in my case, you know, I've said it before and it must be obvious. I have a doctoral degree, so I'm, my student loan payment is ridiculous. So the reflection that I did was really on myself. <laughs> There are persons I know through discussion that look at me and say, oh, wow, you have this great degree and everything. And I'm like, yeah, it's a great degree. But I found out when I was done that, yes, my salary would be uh, around like 150 a year. But after tax come out, what am I getting? Less than 100,000. And after my student loan come out, that would have been half of my salary that I'm getting in my pocket and then I would have to think about my living expenses like a one bedroom in my area is like three thousand dollars like it looks good through the eyes but on paper I don't want to sound ungrateful but I wouldn't mind if I had a reset button I don't know if I'm trying to encourage somebody <laughs> you're probably in a better position than you think you are I guess that's what I'm trying to say. I reached a point in life where I said I don't want to advise individuals about stuff unless they ask me. It can be taken the wrong way. And I've been there before. 
But if I see somebody right now moving from my country, Jamaica, to come here, I would love to sit down with them and say, look here, the opportunity is here. But try your best not to get trapped. Don't get trapped in the credit cards. Don't get trapped in the student loans. Don't get trapped in the mortgage. Don't get tra trapped in the car payments and stuff like that. I would have like a more detailed discussion with them depending on their particular scenario as to how to not get trapped. Because the minute you get trapped, you're stuck here with all the payments, all the everything. You're just in the loop of working, 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 working. <laughs> as I say, it looks pretty on the outside. But internally, it's sucking the life out of you. At some point, you're going to find out the value of life and the value of living, and you're going to realize that it has nothing to do with all of these material things that you're gathering. I turn on the camera with nothing to talk about, and here I am. I just wouldn't want somebody who's in a position where their debt is low. It would be disheartening to, to find out that they're feeling lesser than, feeling like they're not enough or whatever, when really and truly, if you manage to hit that age and not have a lot of um, debt, I feel like you're doing really good, especially in this country. <laughs> or wherever else you are, because I don't really have insights on the other countries, but I'm at the point where, to me, life is about experiences. With the people you love, that's where I am. So, I don't know, my mindset before I got my student loans is completely different than now. Because I really wasn't chasing happiness. I was really just chasing status. You know, whatever. <laughs> my boyfriend, I don't want to give his advice and take credit for it. But he's always saying, like, it's best to just come here. One route could be to gain a skill. A skill in anything you like. With me, I would have just gone to aesthetic school and that would have probably just cost me a couple thousand dollars total <laughs> and work your way up in that field enjoy yourself or it could be in software or whatever even google i heard google was giving like free courses to gain certain technology related skills or so yeah i would go that road some persons work from the bottom of a company and work their way up without a degree or get a much cheaper degree at a state university or something that's just way, 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 way cheaper. Try the entrepreneurial route, which you would with the skill maybe. But overall, like there are multiple ways to eventually even become rich without going the route of an expensive degree. Okay, I'm gonna give you an example of what I know. So when I started working with one of the chain pharmacies, the regular chain pharmacy that you know, right? I'm not going to call no names. I found out that there were certain ways to climb the ladder. I just chose the most expensive way to climb the ladder. So I was going in as a pharmacist with that ranking of degree that I have. And then I found out that there were other people who were climbing that ladder that just started as a technician, meaning a pharmacy technician, which in the States, you need like a high school diploma to work there. And you can work your way up in it and it seems like it will take forever but in the time that i was there going to school you could be working your way up the ladder and i'm just using this example you can apply it to many of the other jobs right so you could have started as a pharmacy tech then become i don't know the name of this position but let's say it's the lead pharmacy tech or whatever and then you could have been like a manager then become like the store manager and then from the store manager you could become corporate level now. Hitting the corporate level is basically where me now as a pharmacist could have jumped and entered the same exact ladder. That would be the next step as a pharmacist to take. And then I would be on the same level as the person who was a store manager taking their next step. And that person wouldn't have that amount of student loan or anything. Or if you needed a certain level of education the company pays for your degree and even if you don't like that company you feel like you're not being treated fairly in america people hop companies multiple times you don't just leave that company and become something in the other one <laughs> this is all what you could have done just walking out of high school without paying a cent out of your pocket for your education you know because they train you within the company and then they offer to pay for your degrees even some of the chain stores that I've worked with, they were offering to send me back to school separate. So I'd have a doctorate in pharmacy and then they were offering to pay for my master's in business or master's in public health or master's in any other realm of degree that would push me to the next level in their corporate level position or whatever. I realized too, when I started looking for industry type job, pharmaceutical industry type job, 
I was joining like webinars and listening to the leaders within the company and their path that they took. And these are the persons who will be my superior and everything. There were people saying, I left high school. Some of them got an associate degree or some form of degree, but some of them also just got a job in high school, not necessarily in the same company, but work their way up in a particular direction that led them to the leadership position where they're now on the ladder above me who have a whole higher degree with all of this loan. So I don't know, just think about it, you know? It comes to a point where education is kind of a scam because all the knowledge you learn in college and university, it's great if you know how to use it, but majority of that knowledge, you're never gonna ever use it again. You have to be strategic about the information you have to not make it come off as a trap. And be very specific and selective of the schools that you pick and the tuition, pay attention to the tuition. Oh, I think my main point is just don't get trapped. Don't get trapped in the system. Don't get trapped in this American debt type of system. Take it from somebody who's loaded with student loans I mean, it's clear that I regret it so much, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, feel free to ask me anything. Um, I'm willing to either make a video response, depending on the weight of that um, question or respond to it in the comments or shoot me an email. I do respond to emails or a DM or whatever. My contact information is below. We also need to know when to shamelessly recognize that you made a mistake financially and click that reset button. So if it is with like a car and you find out that you know what, this car payment is ridiculous, it's, it's running me down into a hole, no it's time to get rid of the car. Or it's a mortgage where you find out that oh shoot I'm trapped and stuck in this mortgage and the house isn't making sense or I have repairs or something because I think a lot of people don't fully recognize that a house isn't always an investment it's a lot more times a liability if you jump into it without a plan an investment mindset or plan you know so overall like recognizing that okay I made a mistake I need to hit that reset button and shamelessly doing it without worrying that oh this person's gonna think that oh i'm broke now or think that i'm this or whatever like, who cares it's like at the end of the day it's your happiness your family's happiness that matters so i'm glad i know that now before i end up in those traps because i already recognized my mistake with my student loans i did a reflection and said okay this cannot happen to me with a mortgage i recognize that i can't afford the house but i'm still holding on to the house and it's killing me because now i have two three jobs trying to maintain it it's like it makes no sense whatever situation you're in you need to recognize that okay you know what time to hit a reset button shamelessly <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna actually go clean up now. Yeah, so I'm Annery Morgan and thank you so much for watching.